I have uh, <clears throat> gotten a new device for recording, and I don't know how much of this I um, have talked about before or how much I'll be able to recover from the old one. But <clears throat> working on the Coke machine, this doesn't look like much, but all of this wiring here was um, coming apart. The, the insulation on the wires, not focusing, sorry. There you go. The insulation on the wires was literally just falling apart. These pieces are pretty rigid now, but I can still work on popping it apart if I want to. Uh, if I just touched it though, it was crumbling and falling apart. Here, those are pieces. Just, you know, you see that, that's bad. So I replaced the power cord and I was messing around with the, uh, the change machine here while it was in the Coke machine. I don't really know what I was doing. I was banging and clanging and moving things around and I actually got it to dispense a bottle, but I don't know what I did. So today I'm going to work on cleaning this up and I have found that there, man, this thing's heavy. There are these little uh, detent levers here. And if I pick that up, and pick that up at the same time, I can pull this change piece out and get behind it. And so I wanna clean this best I can, lubricate things that move, um, and make it function well. This is the, the coin return. And when you push that down, it's like a cam that lifts the whole plate and then puts all the coins to the, to the return slot. But I want to, I want to make this thing function well. So that's what I'm working on right now. So I just uh, with two hands was able to pop that off. And this whole thing just pivots up and out of the place. And exposes a lot of stuff. And it exposes stink bugs that are dead inside here. And um, some repairs that have been made. And right here, there was a wire that was disconnected and just taped off. So I don't know what this solenoid does. I don't know what any of this does yet. But I also see there are some adjustments that can be made. I don't know what the XRS means. My guess is that maybe we can make this a 10 cent, a 15 cent, or a 20 cent machine. I'd like to really just make it so it's not operable um, as far as coin requirements, but for now, I just want to make it work. So I think I'm going to put this wire back together and clean things up, blow it out my best I can, clean this. Excuse me, lubricate it, make things function well, um, things that should move, make them move the same every time. This uh, return, sometimes it comes back, sometimes it doesn't. So I just want to make sure everything has a little bit of lube where it needs it, that it will work, and then I'll go from there. So as with pretty much everything else I ever do, I'm learning as I go. And I found that there's these uh, spring-loaded doors, and they are, they're quite strong. I should probably build like a prop rod. But behind them, let's see if I can snap myself. 
Anyways, this little set screw here is giving the gap for the thickness of a nickel. And right about here, underneath this plate, this is the last plate right here, right about there is where a nickel is either accepted or rejected. So this is the good side, this is the accepted side, this is all the rejected side. And, um, and with that, the accepted ones will go here, and I'm guessing that's accepted. So that's a good thing. If it's rejected, it goes down this chute into a money box. That's like uh, where you get your change back. Um, so that's that. And I'm thinking that this is probably a canister for um, refund money. So that'll probably get filled up with nickels. So as um, nickels, quarters, and dimes were um, placed in there, there'd be some way of keeping record of um, what has come in. Like maybe this is quarters, that's nickels, that's dimes. I don't know. I'm still, um, still figuring this out, but um, if these are telling it what type of money has been accepted, I'm sure this being disconnected and taped off is not helping. So I will keep playing for now with this nickel and some adjustments on this set screw here and get it to the point where that nickel will be accepted every time. And then I will proceed with a dime and see how far that gets me with the operation. Once I get to the point where nickels and dimes are accepted every time, then I will put all this back together, put it back in the Coke machine, and, uh, and try it again. It goes quick, but you can kind of see it go bouncing around like Planko and whether it gets spit out one way or the other. So that was a rejection. That was an exception. Why? I don't know. But I'm getting more to be accepted than rejected. which is a good thing for now. <laughs> and there might be other adjustments that I don't know. I don't know about yet. So I've been doing like a, a quarter turn and then play with it. Good. Bad. Good. Good. Bad. But there's more good ones than bad ones. So for now, I'm going to leave that the way it is. Find my dime and keep working with the dime. Hmm. Well, those are all good ones, except for the times when it gets uh, a little bit hung up in there. Um, I don't know how old this thing is, but it's it's old. So um, to get hung up once in a while, that's probably not such a terrible thing. So now it's time for me to uh, put this all back together and give it another shot and see what happens.
Well, I've been able to make it vend three times total, twice today. And I do know that this is a little trip for when a coin goes through. Um, I have dropped every coin but those three nickels right there in here and not gotten a, a beverage. But if I keep doing this, eventually it'll make more noise. when these solenoids it's been where like this this top one clicks and then if I push a vent button then that one clicks and then the drink comes out but I can't get it to duplicate anything and I I have no rhyme and reason of how and why um, that motor is not sounding great so I think I'm going to take this back apart and see if I can get into some of these guts instead of these guts and keep working on solving this issue. Well, I really don't know what I did, but if uh, I throw a quarter in, which seems to be working the best for the slug rejector or coin acceptor, whatever you want to call it. every single button numerous times and there's a there's a funny thing that this goes through a cycle and I can trip it here one nickel two nickels and as long as these coils are activated like they are buzzing then it just waits for me to make a selection. Um, <clears throat> I went through just with some spray lube and I lubed, you can see like where that black looking grease is. I sprayed there, I put the slides up there, and all of the, all of the rotating to source some uh, actual full bottles and get this thing filled up and cleaned up a little more and I don't know what I'm going to do as far as like the faded decals but I'm going to try doing a little soapy water uh, wet sanding and clean up some of this old paint. Um, eventually I'd like to take that inner panel out and see if I can replace the light bulb that should be behind there or even go with like an LED backlighting. But um, as long as I'm sticking to the quarters, um, it's working. And if I actually fill that brass tube with nickels, it will kick out uh, 10 cents change every time, which is pretty cool as well. Um, as far as the 
So there's a that one right there manages quarters, and this one here manages nickels and dimes. And the nickels and dimes one just doesn't seem to be quite as reliable. Um, there's a little counterbalance right here, and it was pretty beat up. And I think there's something to do with that that's uh, hanging up with nickels and dimes. But as long as I stick with the quarters, we are vending.